Marshall. We would fly down um, the equivalent of Southwest Airlines right now. And leave Oakland, we went down to, went down to LA, it was one of those things we flew down in the morning of the game and flew back the next day. Well, this guy don't take his basketball shoes. You know, hey Tom, can you take my shoes for me? For you, anything. No problem. You treated me great. You're a superstar of the team. No problem. Well, you gotta love them all. And in order to take his shoes, we better take his shoes and his shoes and his and his. And now all of a sudden we've got a bag full of shoes. So we've eliminated guys that haven't worried about anything. They don't even have to show up their basketball shoes. Old timers could not believe that. They don't even have to carry their own shoes anymore? <laughs> no, we got that coming. Oh, where's this world coming? <laughs> so, um, so that led into other things. Paul and I were talking about the way over about the, the sense of self reliance that you build up when you basically have to take care of yourself. And at Weber State, for the eight years that I was there, that's the philosophy that we had. And that's carried over into our point here. So. A long way to answer your question, I think, but you covered a lot of territory. <coughs> Next question. My question kind yes. of went with her, but you answered it. It was, uh, you said they wouldn't come in for the treatment and everything. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of wondering, like, what kind of treatment you would do for them, like, if you said you had physical therapists and chiropractors and all that. Mm -hmm. Kind of like hand in hand. So you kind of explained it a little bit. I think the answer to that question is something that I've learned from Carolyn, and I, she's much, much more skilled than I am. And it is right there. It's all hand in hand. It is your hands. All right? When we were growing up in this profession, one of the things that everybody had was a Cybex Isokinetic iso 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 Dynamo. And if you didn't have, if you had one of those, Bob, you were really special. Only the big time places had those things because they were real expensive. All right, that was like in the 70s and the 80s. And then it was all sorts of different electrical muscles, electrical stimulator units, TENS unit, the interference unit, the EMS, whatever letters of the alphabet you could put together with electrical in there, that was it. All right? And then somewhere along the way, it's all gone different direction, probably back to the very original therapeutic modality right here. Um, one of the things, there's two techniques that I have picked up along the way, either you know, weekend seminar or talking to people. And one is uh, the active release technique, which is, again, it's a soft tissue mobilization technique, probably that goes uh, under a lot of different names. And strain, counter strain, which is also joint position sense. Joint position release. And those are two extremely effective therapeutic techniques. And the um, worst comes the worst, if that's the only thing you've got, you're going to be pretty good at doing what you to get something done. That and low manual therapy, low manual resistance. The, you know, like someone said, we, when I was at Weber, we didn't have a weight room when I first got there. It was like very small, if it had anything at all. And they said, oh, let's just get some broomsticks and just press down on everybody. They're, they're doing military presses. The body's not going to know if it's a weight or if it's a broomstick or somebody's hands. Mm -hmm. Towels, it's, it's resistance, that's all it is. Yeah, that's true. You can do some great ankle rehab just with your hands. Let alone PNF stuff. So we talk about hand in hand, yeah. Now, working with the therapists, working with the chiropractors, if they're good people and they're willing to share their expertises so that we can learn, and they're not there all of the time. We are. So there are times when we can try to do something to keep keep things going in the right direction. And if they're willing to share and work, hey great. The ones I've had trouble with are the ones that are thinking, hey, this is my world, and, you know, no, 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 I got it, don't worry about it. In a long way, I've had the face paint on my, like a grease monkey, you're getting thrown under the bus like that. So, those that go back to the original question about the challenges. Next question. Um, have you found yourself dealing with more agents these days? question is, have I found myself dealing with more agents? With only 15 players, we don't have too many agents just from the standpoint of numbers. And we've got three or four of our guys all have the same agent, which is good. Now, the agent's job is to be the advocate for the player. And that's first and foremost. You've got to understand. And in reality, a player might be with us for one year or two years or his entire career. But... He also has to understand the agent is going to be there for him to look out for his needs. 
Uh, the latest trend in dealing with some of the agents is that they all have their own medical staff. You know, I'm based, this particular agent is based in the Midwest. He's got his foot guy that's over here, he's got his knee guy that's over there, he's got his back guy that's over there. And uh, you just hope that they all agree in principle with what we do. Uh, there's some agents, they're good guys. We realize that they're looking at the best interest of their players. And I think they realize we're looking out for the best interest of their players also. There's some agents who are not necessarily good guys. And they'll get into a player's ear and tell them anything. And um, those are the ones that are the challenges. So we've had a, there's one particular agent who's had several of our players along the way who has made life difficult, not just for me, but for a lot of people within our organization. And this is the way it goes. You know that going in. You say, oh yeah, he's got this particular guy as an agent. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, but again, all boils down to communication and, and understanding and respect. We had a player my first year who was a very, very high profile player and needed knee surgery. And we traded for him in the middle of the year. He needed knee surgery about six weeks after we got him. We know this guy for six weeks and decided that he was going to go back to his alma mater and have his position there, take care of him. And our position was a little upset. You know, I'm the team doc. It's like, yeah, but that's his personal position in a sense. You know, he's known him a long time. He's just known us for a short period of time. Well, as it turns out, a year later, he needed the other knee scope. He comes into me and says, okay, you know, when are we going to do it? We'll just do it here. We're not gonna be, I don't need to go back home. I know you guys. I trust you guys. Let's go to that. We had a good outcome here, and it turned out fine. Then we traded him a bunch of years later. <laughs> Next question. Yes, sir. What are some of the main things you do in the offseason? Ah. <laughs> Biggest misnomer in sports. There is no Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do I do during the slow times? <laughs> the slow, the non-game time. Um, let's see. As Carolyn pointed out, we've had a phenomenal history of postseason play, <laughs> and our postseason play has lasted long into the summer. Um, our season is scheduled to end according to the NBA schedule this year on the 13th of August or 18th. April 15th, that's our last regular season game. That's the same thing. The Lakers have their last regular season game. Alright? Now, if the Lakers go into the playoffs, they'll start the first round probably that Sunday. And we'll see. If we don't go to the playoffs, then we'll be done. That's just the way it goes. So, um, during the early part of the off season, there really isn't much going on. Chance to catch your breath a little bit, kind of clean out your office, try to organize some administrative stuff. So on and so forth. Um, then we have uh, NBA TA meetings in the middle of May in conjunction with our pre-draft physical combine like the NFL has. And our NBA TA meetings, the pre-draft physicals are in Chicago. So that will start about a month after the season finish. And then uh, we have pre-draft workouts where we like job interviews for these guys that involve jump shots. And we bring a player in, just like a job interview. You know, we might have a meet with us. We have dinner with some people, but basically the nuts and bolts of it is, are you a basketball player? So that'll go on until the draft. Uh, the NATA convention and the draft are generally about the same time at the end of June. I've got an extremely supportive organization and administration, administration that still allows me to go to the convention. That's also good for my assistant because he pretty much runs the draft from the medical standpoint, he and our position. So that's a good opportunity for him to grow. And then in uh, early July, on the 4th, 5th of July, uh, the summer pro league in Las Vegas starts. And that'll be about a short two weeks, let's say, not quite two weeks to base, where we'll have a little mini camp and we'll play maybe five games in nine days. So it's a time to go down there, get organized, bring our a couple of veterans in, our young guys who we just drafted, free agents and such. And then literally once Vegas summer league finishes, there's not much going on for about a month. Uh, that's typically the time in the NBA. As my brother said at one point in time in his career, you can shoot a cannon down the hall of an NBA office in the month of August and not touch anybody. I mean, that's historically the old timers are definitely gone. 
and you know even even the younger ones realize we're not likely to see too many players during the months of the middle of July to the middle of August, you know, because that's when they're going to come on. And uh, if they play the summer league, you want to let them get away. You kind of rewarded them. If they play the summer league, that means they've gone through off-season workouts from the early part of June on. That's been six weeks to so find get away, some active rest. So that's the time for everybody just kind of disappear from them. And then it also kind of cranks up in the middle of August, and you hope you bring your veterans back around Labor Day. And then for those who are married and have kids in school, they're going to be in school by about then, and you hope it all falls into place. Training camp for us started a little bit early this year. Our physical is around the 27th of September. So here it is, the 20th of, of October, and we're almost done with the preseason. My mind is about a week behind. For me, this should be, this at this point in preseason, should be another week from now. Because I'm not used to starting physicals that early, and the season starts. I remember when our, I remember when our season didn't start until November 1st. We will have already had three games played by then. So it's all about television. You know how many times you can see Miami on TV this year. <laughs> Next one, yes. I'm um, just touching on Paul's point on on his, on his question. How much do they take into your consideration, like when you get? On like a trade or like a free agency, how much are they, are they taking your knowledge of the history that you get? A lot depends on the administration um, and our administration time. There are times when, like I said, when we've made trades, it we've had the, the mandatory physical has been waived. You know, if it's an inconsequential trade, it's not going to impact any salary levels that much, and salary caps, so on and so forth. We're just making a trade just to shake things up. So we might waive it this point. Right? So does it make any difference? What method that there is? Um, and there's been situations where we've had a free agent that we want to look at, but we've heard something about some history. So we want to get nitty-gritty as to what's going on. 